Good morning, everyone. It is 11.20. I am down here in Garland at that huge park I've taken you here before, Rowlett Creek Preserve. It's where I um, fell in the mud by the creek over there. I um, just got done walking I walked about 15 minutes, 15, one five, not five oh, 15. It was a nice walk. It's beautiful, sunny. It's probably 70 degrees by now. The high today is 81. And just got back to the car and thought I'd call you up and do a hashtag Red Rover Reverse video. I was looking back at my Red Rover Reverse videos and when I first started, I was numbering them and I don't know what happened with the last one. I forgot to number it, but I guess it doesn't matter. Spring, the fiber enthusiast who started this, I don't remember her saying that we needed to number the videos. So Let's see, who am I gonna Red Rover reverse you today? And if you don't know what this is, um, I don't explain it in every video, but what it is, is it's just like that game we played when we were kids, Red Rover reverse, Red Rover, um, it was Red Rover, send someone over. But this in our Yarny community is Red Rover reverse. So what we do is we name off other creators and try to send you that way you know to support others to uh just see what else is out here on these youtube streets and it doesn't have to be um people in the yarny community it can be people in homesteading and cooking and carpentry and auto and um chickens of course chickens so let's see Lisa Knits and Vlogs. Lisa is a wonderful supporter and she's over there in Australia. You'll love her accent. Um, I was watching her video. She's doing a scarf thing with really nice pink yarn. And uh, she said, she said an expression that caught me funny. Uh, like you can go over and chase it on. In other words, you could go like on the Ralvary, I think it was, and look for the pattern. I think that's what she meant. But the way she said it, it cracked me up. But Lisa um, has been a wonderful supporter to my channel, watching my videos, commenting, and um, I see her around here and there doing the same thing to other people. So. If you would check out Lisa Knits and Vlogs, and I'll leave a link in the description to these three channels I'm gonna mention. And if you would go over there and watch a video, please, and comment and use the hashtag Red Rover Reverse and let her know that Miguel from Who Knows 7834 sent you. I believe that, can you believe again, I forgot to write down the number that YouTube attached to my name, but I believe it's 7834. Um, and subscribe to our channel if you'd like to, but at least watch a video and leave that comment, please. And then there's Pam. B, like the bumblebee, B Creative Crafts. Pam is a southerner and she crochets and she just recently did a lot. She does a lot of lives. I forget when they, oh, wait. Uh, I know they're on Thursdays because I usually miss those because I have church on Thursday. Um, but her last live, I did pop in. I had just come home from church and she was still on and I popped in and she was doing a shell stitch. 
and it looked just like the shell stitch that I'm using for that baby blanket. Now this um, baby blanket that I'm making for a friend back home, it's shell stitch and it's a pattern I've used for for many, many years. But you'll like Pam. Um, she's very down to earth and another great supporter, watching videos, commenting in people's videos. So check out Pam at B, B E E, Creative Crafts. Then there's Melissa, Crochet N, I N, Agreement. Melissa, she has a ministry of making blankets for sick people. And I think that that's wonderful. Um, she also dyes yarn. She does a beautiful job and she does lives when she's dyeing yarn. I have I have not been able to purchase any of her yarn. And when I had my little Bantam rooster Abner with all his vibrant colors, I wanted to see if she couldn't come up with a yarn with his colors and um, let me buy it from her. But he ended up passing away and well, that's what happened. But um, Melissa, so talented. So many talented people out here on YouTube, not just in the Yarny community, but like I said, um, all the different channels. You know, people are so talented. It It's amazing when I stop and think about it. So please check out these people. And um, like I said, I'll leave a link. Now I'll chat with you for a little bit. I have my driver's side window just kind of cracked because three parking spaces over is a car with some young people in it with some what they call music. It's kind of loud. But I have my passenger's window all the way down or mostly down and one back window down to get the breeze in. You can see right here, the tree behind me. Everything is so green after we got all that rain. Now this week they're calling for more rain. I guess it will probably be July or August by the time the chicken yard, um, you know, is dry enough to where um, the landlord's handyman can dump out some dirt and level it off and um, help me fix my chicken coop that's slanted. All that big puddle that was in the chicken yard has dried up, but now it's all really thick, sticky, gumbo clay mud. I went out there this morning to open the chicken door and I got stuck in that mud. But you see all little prints like this from the chickens. One of my chickens, my Easter Egger, I don't know if she's not feeling well. I was paying close attention to her yesterday and tried to catch her. She's always been very timid. I wanted to catch her and check her out, but um, as the day went on and it got to be evening, she seemed a little bit more herself. So I gotta keep my eye on her. I am, um, oh, let me show you. Let me show you. I started early this morning at home. Uh oh, where'd it go? Um, I finished that variegated blue scrubby that I was working on and then I started this one this morning. Well, actually, do I have it here? I say I finished it. I finished all my rows. This scrubby pattern that I use, I've been making these about five, six years, and it's a red heart pattern. And it's really the only one that I like to make. I have no trouble with it. And it's two parts. When I say two parts is 
you make the cylinder, I call it a cylinder, and you do your rows, you leave a big tail in the beginning and a big tail at the end. And then with a yarn needle, with your tail, you um, go in and out of your stitches around here to make like a drawstring. And then you pull that, then you do the same at the other end. And when you pull it, it becomes round and flat like a disc. And then you, um, you pull your tail through in the middle and, and the other one through the middle and knot it really tight. And then I bring it through the opposite side and do the same thing. Now I use a size G. Um, I forget what the pattern calls for. I don't even look anymore. Cause like I say, I've been making these about five years and I don't chain as many. I know that I don't chain as many as the um, pattern says. I think the pattern well, I chain 18 and I do 27 double crochet in the ring. And my first row, I do join it just to secure it. And then you're gonna work your double crochets like, um, I guess like a front post. So that way there you get the texture and you do it for four inches. You can look it up, uh, Red Heart Free Scrubby Pattern. You can see I got this one. And this one. And this one. Now, one now I like to use the Red Heart Scrubby Yarn, but this one is the Yarn the yarn Bee Scrubby from Hobby Lobby. I'm not opposed to using it. If I have it, I'll use it. And I do have it because I got it a couple years ago on their big clearance for $1.12. It's a Scrubology. Now one skein of this and one skein um, also of the Red Hot Scrubby gets me two scrubbies, which is pretty good. I thought that car was like mine, but it's not. That's a Kia Soul, but over there is one like mine. Now I made these, oh, like I said, I started about five or six years ago, maybe five. And I made two and I gifted them to my landlord's mother as a gift. Well, I've told you this before. She has six living children, three boys and three girls. So she ordered a whole bunch that year for her three daughters and her three daughter-in-laws. I made a... Uh, a little bit of money that time. I'm hoping to get a bunch made up before Mother's Day and see if I can't sell some. And I always have my measuring tape to measure my four inches of my scrubby. And um, it's just one of the little projects I like to take. Now today is, today is the local monthly meetup in Plano. Where are my glasses? In Plano, and I have not been in so long, I'm ashamed because I am an admin assistant of the Facebook group, which is if you wanna look and join, even if you don't live here in Texas, um, Crochet Slash Knit Addicts of North Dallas is the Facebook group. You can join it. I'm an admin assistant so I can approve you. And just say, I sent you. That's a nice German Shepherd. 
Um, and I, I'm ashamed I haven't been to the local monthly meetup in so long, but I'll tell you what, the group has grown. Not only the Facebook group, I forget how many we have there, but the local monthly meetup group, they sent me a picture or they posted a picture last month of the meetup and, and it was pretty big. I think 10 people, 12 people maybe. Now, there were times when we were meeting up when there was like four or five of us. It's grown, which is great. And I have encouraged people through the Facebook group, if you're not in our area to where you can meet up, don't be afraid to branch out and start up a group, you know, wherever you live. And I've noticed some people in the, um, that guy I think was wondering why who I'm talking to. I mean, I looked over that way because he just pulled in and he got out of his truck and walked around just at the time that I looked that way and was talking. <laughs> um, and I've noticed on the Facebook group that some people in different parts are wanting to and are trying to start up groups in their area. So why not branch off and do that? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to meet up with people. So I'm going to try my best to get there today. Now, I have been invited. Um, if I include the local monthly meetup, that will make three events I've been invited to today. That one is craft related, but then there's two other events I've been invited to. Um, and I'm not planning to go to the other two. I really want to go to the meetup, but we shall see. I'm still driving on that donut. Ooh. And so now someone's pulling up right next to me. Oh, one space over. People are walking on that path I just came from. That guy that got out of the truck is with a lady, probably his wife, and then a little toddler. And that toddler is just. They each got one of her hands and she's just ready to go. They're gonna find out when they get to that big tree that I've taken a picture of, the way that tree slants where the picnic tables are, they're gonna find out that the um, cement ends right there. Then you're in grass in some spots mud in some spots there's still puddles oh wow you know what i don't know how to flip my phone to show you maybe i can hold you up that guy caught some big fish let's see if i can't show you if someone knows how to flip your phone you know when you're doing a video like this can you tell me oh let me wait till he holds the fish up they're big they have to be 10 inches from head to tail to keep them. Um, there's a hose there, which is very nice of the park to provide that. And um, he's taken off his rubber pants. He probably got in the creek. Um, so they have a hose there where people can wash off their fish, wash off your shoes. I've seen people wash off their um, bikes. He's whistling. He's happy. Let's see. Oh, he put him down on the ground again. I wish I knew what to press to reverse this. I'm afraid to press anything because you know I'll probably, it'll probably hang up on you. Oh, that kid was smart. He took off his took off his boots and now he's putting on some Crocs. Mm. They come prepared. Now here come some other guys with a bucket so they may have fish in their bucket. I love to watch people. Let's see. I'm waiting for him to hold up a fish. Now that one don't look 10 inches but okay. Turn on the water. There's a hole in the hose, so he's getting sprayed. 
He needs his friend to come step on that hole. All right, let's see if I can show you. I don't know what you're gonna see. Can you see him? Oh, now he's not holding it up. Oh, now he's holding it up. Now he's not. <laughs> one fish washed. Oh, that one's too small, but he's, he's keeping it. Now, if the law came through here, might find himself in some trouble. Well, what are you all working on? I still have my earache. And um, yesterday <clears throat> I called the doctor because I'm pretty sure it's an ear infection. My blood sugar yesterday morning, everyone, was 401 too high and I'm sure I'm sure it's because this is an ear infection because Thursday I didn't have any supper I mean time just flew by and I didn't eat anything when I came from church and so you know there was nothing in me to be um, trying to burn off during the night when I'm sleeping which when you're sleeping you're not burning nothing off that's another small fish um, but if you're diabetic and you run any kind of infection, your sugar will go up. And so it's been an ear ache, and then I'm sure it's an infection. I called the doctor and had to talk to the nurse. There's some nurses that like to play doctor. <laughs> and I know some nurses in some cases are even better than doctors, but my doctor's nurse isn't. And um, she wanted me to make an appointment to go down there so they could look in my ear. And I said, and she wanted me to go yesterday. I said, it's very unwise of you to encourage someone with their blood sugar over 400 to drive 22 miles one way in traffic. And then I have to come home. I said, I know what an ear ache and an ear infection feels like. And I'm pretty sure I need an antibiotic. And she was saying, you have to be evaluated first. And I said, when I, um, can this message please get to the doctor? My doctor knows that I don't always call for medicine, you know, um, just when I really need something. And she said, well, the doctor's not even in and won't be until late this afternoon. I said, there's no way that I'm going to be driving to Plano in late afternoon in all that traffic that you're wanting me to come down there. I asked her, could you please send the message to the doctor and let's leave it up to her? And then could someone call me back? Well, about an hour later, the nurse called back. She said that she talked to the doctor and the doctor agreed with her that I need to go down there and I said, well, I'm not, and I didn't. The other thing is, it's all about money. You know, I go down there. Now someone's pulling it on this side. Oh, the hose is, that hose must have more than one hole. Um, I go down there and the doctor gets, she'll bill Medicaid or Medicare. So she's getting money. And I'm burning up my gas and putting more wear and tear on my donut tire. So, no. Now those people have a really big dog and I don't, it looks like a Great Dane. Those boys must be so proud that they caught fish. I mean, they are really washing them and 
scrubbing them and getting sprayed by the holes in the hose. Well, 25 minutes I've kept you here, so I better let you go. Better let you go. But please check out these channels, and I'm going to hang up now, and I'm going to put the links into them. Okay, I'll talk to you later.